This is Larry Lawton, and he's an ex-jewel thief. Larry's a former career criminal, once considered the biggest jewel thief in the United States. I swear to you, when I got on this yard, it was like, holy fuck, I thought I was in Disneyland. It was brand new. Okay, everybody, I'm back. Here we are. We're in, we're gonna, I'm going to be doing chapter 11 today, and chapter 11 is called Coleman and Jessup. And I'm going to be going over some stories from Coleman and Jessup. I uh, hope everybody's liking it, and it's pretty cool. Uh, keep the comments coming, man. I really do enjoy it, and I, I enjoy answering them. So this is pretty cool. So I, I, I'm in Atlanta. I get out of Atlanta because my points went down. In the prison system, your points are is what your security level is. So if you have a low point, you're going to a low security. If you go into, if you have like somewhat uh, a little higher points, you go to a, a low. And they have a camp, low, medium, and high. And then they have a super max. But uh, a high is the penitentiary. So I'm going down to a medium. Doesn't mean it's not a not a uh, violent prison. It could be violent. It could be different things. They have different some medium prisons, which I'll talk about later. Our gang units, I ended up going to a gang unit too. But anyway, so here I am getting transferred. I'm getting transferred to Coleman, Florida. I'm going from Atlanta to Coleman, Florida. Now I'm saying, okay, what's Coleman like? I'm asking around people, what's Coleman? What's guy? Man, Lawton, you're lucky. You're going to be going to a country club. I mean, Coleman's just cool. It's a country club. You're going to love it, man. It's nice. It's brand new and all this. This is Now I'm getting transferred. Coleman was built in 95. I'm just coming from Atlanta, which was built in 1903. So this prison is a new prison. This is in about, uh, oh, I think it was 2000, I went to Coleman. So here, I, uh, 1999, I went to Coleman. So it's a pretty new prison. It's only four years old. So I remember I take the bus. This is the first, one of the first times I said I take the bus and I didn't have to go on Con Air. I already been on Con Air and I didn't have to go on Con Air. So I said, okay, that's not bad. I don't got to go on Con Air. It was a six-hour ride from Atlanta, Georgia to Coleman, Florida, which was down in central Florida, and it's near Lakeland, near just a little bit outside Orlando area. So I'm heading down there, and it's a long bus ride, and, you know, again, here's these idiots that think they can eat. You know, it's on a bus. You're on a Greyhound bus. You look, bus looks just like a Greyhound bus. It's got the cages. There's a cage in the front of the bus where the guard and the driver sit. There's a guard, a lieutenant who runs that bus. He's sitting on the right in, a, in like a jump seat. Then there's a bus driver who's another guard, of course. He's driving the bus, and they're behind a cage. And then we're all locked up, shackled and belly ironed and everything else. And then in the back, there's another cage with a guard sitting in that cage. And there is an actual pee, a bathroom open, though, just open, where you could take a piss. I mean, I've seen a guy try to take a shit in that, and you can't. You're going to shit your pants. You're going to do everything else you can do. It's just, it's, it's disgusting. Because they're not going to uncuff you. No matter what, they're not going to uncuff you. So, it's a long trip, and the guards stop on the road. And they only stop at McDonald's or wherever they're going to go for themselves. They don't give you anything. They give you a bag lunch. They give you an apple, a go-go juice, a little, like, one of those little milk carton, but they're juice. And they'll give you a pack of crackers. And it was really funny because all the times that anybody who's ever been there will tell you that crackers are outdated. So they must get these crackers for free or whatever they donated or whatever. But they're all outdated crackers. So they can't be sold. But they give them to us. So anyway, I'm heading down to Coleman. And I know I'm going to be closer to home too. That's another good thing. I'm going to be closer to home. So this is going to be, this is good for me too. I said, okay, I'm getting closer home. It's not a violent prison. I'm going to a country club. Now, on the way down, people know you came from Atlanta. A lot of people aren't coming from a penitentiary like that down. Some do, but some are getting right to that penit to the medium. So you get kind of respect, and they heard you just came from Atlanta. They say, man, I ain't fucking with this guy. He just came from Atlanta. So we we'll get down, and I'll never forget, the bus pulls up in front of the prison, and a, a truck comes on this side, a truck comes on this guard, out comes guards again. They got their shotguns. They're waiting. They file everyone in through the prison, right in the front door, and you go through the side, then you go to the front door through metal detectors. Even though you're shackled, they just let you go through. It's not even that. They're all watching your guards, and you go into receiving and discharge. 
So when you go into receiving and discharge, now is when they do that process. They strip search you, they change your clothes out, they lift the nuts, spread the ass, do the whole works. You got to do the whole entire, like we used to call it a dog and pony show. But obviously they're looking for stuff and whatever, and who knows what people have on them. As I said in the past uh, uh, videos, you know, suitcasing is popular. So anyway, you get through there and you get the unit. Again, most people go on the yard, and this is a medium now. This isn't a penitentiary, but I had to go to a, uh, the hole. So they shoot me straight to the hole from the uh, R&D. And I, I was in the hole for about a week before the captain's review said, hey, Law, you're going to be all right on this yard. You're not going to cause any trouble. I know you're coming from a penitentiary. It's a nice place. We don't need any assholes here. You just don't get cause any trouble. You can do a nice time. Of course, I want to do a nice time. I swear to you, when I got on this yard, it was like, holy fuck, I thought I was in Disneyland. It was brand new. They had three units. They had a, 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 a unit, B unit, C unit, and I think it's four units, D unit. Was it C? No, the, the, the yard and stuff was near the D, they called that. But it was A, B, and C units. And now each unit has an A1, A2, and then A a three and a four that's like one building has four big units on it one building has four big units it's about 1500 inmates in this prison and each unit is set up like that and they all come to a central location where they have a guard shack in the middle where you have to go through that shack wherever you're going the kitchen's up here you got to go up the pathway through the guard shack then go to the kitchen and if you have to go to the yard you go straight to the middle of the compound and then you go to the yard Wherever you're going, you got to go through the center of that unit. It's, it's, it's like the little hub of the whole prison. It's in the middle of the unit. So anyway, we're coming in there. Most prisons are like that. I noticed. There's most of them. Edgefield, the next one you'll see. But they're, most of them are like that. The, the different ones are, certain ones are different. I'll explain them later. So anyway, here I was, I'll never forget, everyone laugh, I, I'm laughing saying that because it's, it's funny because people have been saying that in comments, you'll never forget. But anyway, here I am, I'm on a yard and I said, holy shit, man, this place is beautiful. Again, I know a few people, I mentioned some names, people know who you are, hey, oh Lord, yeah, we were in a holdover together, yeah, I was up there with this guy and this guy. It's a kind of small world as much as it... It's a big system. There's over 200,000 federal inmates, but it's a small world because usually the East Coast guys stay on the East Coast. West Coast, West Coast guys stay on the West Coast. So here we are. I know some people. It's a beautiful prison. I said, man, I got it made here. I'm going to lay down. I'm not going to cause any trouble. They had an aerobics class. When I say an aerobic class, I mean real aerobics. I mean, this is not bullshit. Aerobics. I used to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go to a step aerobics class. I got down to 185 pounds. That was my lightest I've ever been prison. Working out all the time. Great place. I said, man, this is this is great. I got to watching TV. I used to watch the stock ticker. We had a lot of like people who even fraudsters, guys who uh, screwed over Wall Street for millions of dollars and millions and millions of dollars. And they'd be watching the stock tickers and stuff like that. So I, I got to watch that as well. And I got to learn about the stocks. I'll never forget. I was in... It, this is in 1999, and I bought a company. I bought stock. Guy's giving me a tip, and this guy's a big genius, and he says, hey, Larry, you got to buy this stock. It's advanced radio. Never forget, it's advanced radio. So I call, call outside the prison, get a contact of mine, and I bought 1,000 shares. It cost me 11,000 bucks. 11,000 11, bucks. I had money, and I bought 1,000 shares of a company called advanced radio. Now, I'm in the prison every day watching the stock stock uh, go up. And, and I'm thinking I'm a genius. This is when the stock market was going crazy. I'm watching the stock go up. And it started out at $11. And it's at $12, $15, $18. I'm thinking, man, this is the next Microsoft. If you bought $1,000 worth of Microsoft, $1,000 worth of Microsoft back when they started, if you bought in in 2000 this was or you would have been worth 10 million dollars into just a thousand thousand shares a thousand dollars worth of shares of Microsoft stock you would have been worth 10 million dollars so I'm thinking I'm a genius 
I'm going to buy this stock. I said, this is great, man. I can't, I'm loving it. I'm watching, I'm reading the USA Today because I get the USA Today delivered. So I'm reading the USA Today. I'm reading the financial part of it. I'm starting to learn all this stuff and I'm loving this. I said, this is great. This is really fun and things are going good. It was so good. I had a guy, uh, Frankie, who used to cook for me. You know, I had connections. So I had some money coming in always because I'm retired Coast Guard. I had a pension. And my dad used to send the money into me regularly. So I always had money. So I was paying Frankie every single week to be a cook for me. He used to work in the kitchen. So he would steal things out of the kitchen and bring me sandwiches to my cell, bring food to my cell. I mean, I had it made. This is like, I'm in the best unit in the world. And I'm sending Frankie 50 bucks a week. 50 bucks a week I'm sending in the outside on, on his, what they call it street money. So I'm sending 50 bucks every week to his street money. Now, I didn't do anything in this prison. I wasn't bookmaking. I wasn't selling drugs. I wasn't doing anything. I was actually in the law library. I got into the law really good. So I'm every day I'm walking to the law library. I'm learning more. I'm reading books. I'm studying cases. I'm helping people. People are coming up to me. Hey, can you help me with my case? There's what they call jailhouse lawyers all over the place in prison. And they charge people. I never charge the person. I, I can't stand that. They did. I get the hustle, it's called, but I didn't do that. I didn't charge people there. I just worked and tried to help them. I really got good at fighting the prison system. And I'll tell you about that later. But it, I just fought the system. I, I loved learning the law. I learned all about every regulation in prison there is. And what they're supposed to do, what they don't do. And then I learned the law. I started all that because of my own case on my beating my own gun charge, I beat the 924C. So to beat the 924C, you got to know your shit. You know, you have to know every little, every little detail of that law. And then how does that law apply to whoever's case it is or your own case? Mine was my own case. So I got to know the law very well. I love this prison. And I'm saying, man, this is the best prison in the world. So here I am, I get called to the lieutenant's office. And I go, well, what the fuck does the lieutenant office want me for? Whenever you get in trouble, you, something happens. They call, you know, Lawton, Lawton 5224 004 to the lieutenant's office. Lawton 5224 004 to the lieutenant's office. What the fuck you want me for? Your people say, hey, Lawton, they called you lieutenant's office. Hey, Lawton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I head to the lieutenant's office. We had a guy who worked for with the SIS. The SIS in prison. And any prison is the like the FBI of the prison. They're like, they investigate guard corruption. They investigate drug deals. They investigate serious assaults. Not, you know, like stabbings or, or really when someone gets hurt bad. Uh, murders. They, they are police. They actually have arrest powers as well. Not just like a guard. They have arrest powers. And they're, they're, they're agents, so it's called the SIS, Special Investigative Services, or whatever the hell they call them. But it's SIS. So we had a, a guy, an SIS lieutenant named Figueroa. Never forget him in my life. What a prick. He's still working in a BOP. For, uh, that's what I heard. He's still working in a BOP. What a fucking asshole. So anyway, Figueroa calls me up to the office and says, Hey, Lawton, he goes, uh, you're sending $50. You owe, uh, owe Frankie money? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you owe, you owe Frank money, Frankie. And his name is Frankie Tutor. I says, what are you talking about? I don't know Frankie anything. He goes, well, you sent him $50. I said, listen to me, man. I'm getting stuff out of the kitchen. I get some food and I give him money. That's all I'm doing. It's not a big deal. It might be against your regulations, but it's not a big deal. He swears it's some kind of gambling operation I got going. And he throws me in a hole. I'm in the fucking hole in this beautiful prison. So what the fuck? I really didn't do any. I'm only there 15 months. I'm on this yard 15 months. And I'm saying, man, it's a great prison. I don't want to leave. Holy shit. Come on. I, I just didn't want to leave. And sure enough, what happens? They come down to me. They say, Lord, you're getting transferred. Said, oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. I didn't do anything to get my points high. I didn't get what they call a shot. A shot in prison is an infraction. Like if you fight somebody, you get a shot. If you get caught with a shank or a knife, you get a shot. If you get caught with alcohol or any of that, that's a shot. Drugs is a shot. Do you know disrespecting an officer, telling him to go fuck himself, anything like that. That's called a shot or an infraction. So I didn't get any shot or anything. They just thought they knew something, and it, and it was really legitly nothing. 
And here I am. I'm fucking getting transferred. I'm in the hole for four months. It took about two months for them to do an investigation on me. And then after they do the investigation, it takes another two months to get transferred. I'm in the fucking box for two for four months for absolutely nothing. Fuck it, where am I going? You know, I know my points don't go higher, so I'm, I shouldn't be going back to a penitentiary. And sure enough, I'm not. I end up going to a place called Jessup, Georgia. So here I am. I leave a great place. I say, oh, fuck. I'm going to go to Jessup, Georgia. Jessup, Georgia is right, is outside Brunswick, Georgia, not far from Jacksonville, Florida, across the line. Brunswick is right, one of the big cities in Georgia, closer to Florida, right down there. And it's, it's called Jessup, Georgia. Well, the prison is called FCI Jessup, Federal Correctional Institution Jessup. So I get transferred to Jessup, Georgia. And again, you get on the yard. They let me on the yard. They give me a captain's review. A little better this time. And I come on this yard and I go, holy shit, this is even nicer than Coleman. What the fuck? This is the best in the world. This prison has got to be the best. I'm loving this fucking place. I said, Jesus, this is like, I am like blown away. I said, so here I am in Jessup, Georgia. And uh, I'm getting to know everybody. It's an older prison, not way, way old, not like, like Atlanta, but it's older. So they have actually electrical outlets in the cells. And that's a big deal because we harbor that electric. I mean, even though you have nothing that can plug in, they're not going to give you something that can plug in. But the electrical outlets are there for like if you wanted to buff your floor, something like that, you can plug your stuff in. Obviously, we, the uh, convicts, know how to make stingers. I explained a stinger in the last video where you put the two pieces of metal together, and you put a piece of wood in them, put rubber band, then you put the wire so you could dunk it in water, and all of a sudden you got a thing to boil water. So I'm really getting in a groove in this prison. They got free weights. Well, they, I, I, let me let me clarify that. They took the free weights off the yard, but they left the weight machines. Right now in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, as I'm speaking, there's no weights on any yards. They took them off every single yard in prison, in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. There's no more. They don't want us to get bolt up or whatever. But we had machines back then. Matter of fact, I had a pretty good total. I had a 1485 total. That's the squat, bench press, and deadlift. I had a 375 bench, uh, five, 525 uh, uh, deadlift, and a six, 610 or 6-something six squat. And I was in great shape, and I, I enjoyed that. Pull-ups, did workout routines, walked the yard. It got so nice. My brother was transferred there. Now, my brother was convicted on by his wife telling on him and that's a whole nother thing and I never forget and I'll tell you that story but he's in the prison with me I mean this is I got my own brother in the prison it's really nice the prison's great so here I am I'm in I'm going through the metal one of the metal detectors and I get stopped they find some pasta on me I'm stealing pasta from the kitchen you know you get the 10 pound bags so I had pasta on me I get caught and they throw me in the hole Okay, they throw me in a hole. They get me. They give me an infraction for that. And they throw you in a hole. And I was in a hole for about two weeks. So I'm in the hole two weeks. And I come out. And right when I come out, I hear that my celly, Jeremy, gets a shot, an infraction, for having pasta in his cell. In that prison, I used to cook for 10 guys. Every Friday, I would cook for 10 guys. And I used to get the pot put the stinger in it, make pasta. We had a microwave in the unit. So what I would do is I would get cut up garlic with the, you know, the little razor, cut all the garlic, put olive oil in it, cut the, cut the olive oil, uh, garlic really thin. If you cut it really thin and you boil it in the microwave, boil it, boil it. You, that unit smells like an Italian restaurant. Or you can cook the garlic a little longer and it gets hard. And it's actually like garlic chips. It's really good, man. So anyway, I used to cook for, I used to make aglio olio, which is garlic and olive oil. And I used to make that for 10 guys. Guys come from other units and everything. It got so good, the guards used to like it. We had the guards so good in that unit. They were such good, 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 good guards. They would actually pull the paperwork of other inmates to make sure they weren't a snitch or they weren't a chomo, child molester. 
So those are the guards that were cool with us. I mean, they loved my cooking. And I would give them a bowl of pasta right in front of everyone. We're all there. Of course, we got 10 guys. They'd let other guys come in our unit without saying anything. And we'd come up to the TV room and we had 10 or 12 of us. We're all bullshit and eating bowls of pasta. My cell was right next to the, to the TV room up on that second tier. So my cell was like the home home kang hangout cell and we'd go to the tv room and i'd be making people i had i had two cut down paint buckets full and i would make pasta unbelievable we, we'd make it and i'm telling you to this day i make that dish called prison pasta it's called prison pasta it's great it's it, it's a great dish i eat it to this day so it's a lot of fun to eat and people love it they go man this is good law and this is yeah, it's prison pasta. And I go, what do you mean? And I tell him the story how I used to make it. So anyway, I get caught. I come back out of the hole. Jeremy, who was my celly, he gets, they said they gave him an infraction. He's got to go to a disciplinary hearing for uh, the pasta. So I said, man, that's my pasta. He ain't getting hit for that pasta. So I go into the unit manager. I'll never forget her name. I'll never forget. Her name is Tubbs, T-U-B-B-S. So Miss Tubbs, later I find out that she ends up getting fired and almost going to jail for having sex with one of the inmates. But anyway, Tubbs, I'm in the, I go into the unit. Now, you have, where I'm in one unit. It was B1 and you had B2 on the other side. And in between the units in this place is where all the offices are. Like there's the, the counselor's office, the case manager's office, and the main office, and they have what they call the unit manager. So there are all the offices are offices are in there and I go through the door and I go in and I see the unit manager Tubbs. I said, Hey, Miss Tubbs. I said, man, that, that, that pasta is not Jeremy's. I said, that's mine. I'll take the hit for that. You want to put me back in a hole, whatever you're going to do, give me the shot. She goes, no. I said, what do you mean? It's my pasta. It's mine. It's not his. She says, he had the opportunity to tell whose pasta it was. And I'm getting madder and madder. I said, he's not going to do that. He's not a snitch. I don't hang around with snitch. She goes, well, I don't care. She's getting really, really me agitated because she's such being such a smart ass. And I'll never forget. She says, gives me that hand shit and says, get out of here. I fucking go black. I fucking go blank. I rip a phone off the wall. Boom. I fucking hit the phone. I take a a paper shredder, uh, not paper, you know, the paper cutters, the heavy, thick paper cutters. I take it and I throw it at her. Wham! I throw it. She ducks and hits a computer. I'm fucking going nuts. I break the glass that uh, the door. I fucking slam the fucking door. Boom! Door. The phone flies off the wall after hitting it. I put a hole in the wall when I open the, slam the fucking door. I'm fucking pissed. Already, the deuces are hit. She already hit the alarms. And, you know, you hear the alarms, you know, and they're screaming lockdown to hold you. And it's all for me. Now, this is in the wintertime in Georgia. And I'm fucking, I mean, I lost it. I totally lost it. I come out the door and I rip my shirt off. Don't ask me why. I'm ready to fight. And I'm ripping my foot and they lock the doors. I'm now out in the front of the unit. And there's one unit here, one unit here. I'm in the front of the unit. And I got my fucking shirt. I ripped it off. And I am like, a, I'm really, I'm a psychopath at that point. And I'm wanting to fight them all. I'm wanting to fight everybody. And I see my brother trying to get out of the unit to help me. They had him locked in. So I, I'm fighting and now they're all surrounding me. They don't attack me. They're surrounding me. And I'm wanting to fight them all. And a guy, I'll never forget his name, Spells. Spells says, Lawton gotta lock you up I'm I, I, like, like Lawton I gotta lock you up I turned right to him and, and, and I just like looked at him and I said you could lock me up so I put my hands behind my backs and I and I got my hands behind and I'm locked I'm I'm like I am so hot I mean I'm like and I'm ripped at that I'm like ready to fight ready to go nuts I was just a nut and they, they take me to the hole, the whole unit. Go, oh, my God. I end up going to the hole. I know I screwed up royally in this beautiful joint. And I know 
There's going to be an investigation. I don't know what they're going to charge me with. I, I, they charged me with an assault on a, on a unit manager or destruction of government property. They even charged me for that. All the damage. It was over $2,000 in damage I, I caused that office. They didn't outside charge me. So now I'm in the hole in Atlanta. I mean, in Jessup, I'm in the hole. And the hole there was a zoo, though. And I'll never forget that the head of SIS in that prison wasn't Figueroa. This one was a guy named Price. He was a pretty good guy. Big fat guy. Again, I'll never forget his name, Price. He was a pretty good guy. And, I mean, he, he just kind of knew. He goes, you know, this lady was an ass or whatever. She really should have just... You were trying to stick up for a guy. I mean, it wasn't like I'm, I'm trying to run this prison or tell him how to do things. It's It was really that bad. They fucked up. But anyway, so Price actually, given how good of a guy he was, after the investigation was done, I knew I was getting transferred. I'm going back to a penitentiary. That's a fact. I mean, I just went nuts on a unit staff, and I'm not ready for these mediums. So they, this guy's going back to the penitentiary. But anyway, they Price even let my brother come visit me in the hole when I was in Jessup which was pretty cool, knowing that we were together and just to have a visit, because, you know, in, in prison, who knows who's going to get killed or whatnot. But he let us have a visit. The hole was so crazy in Jessup. I'll tell you what happened. So I'm in Jessup, Georgia, and the time they had a major incident. First of all, they had a guy who was a gay guy named Jose Linares. Never forget him either. Jose Linares was a clerk for what they call Unicor. In prison, they have what they call prison industries. Well, prison industries is a is bullshit. It's a they take jobs away from real people on the on the free world, and here's how they do it: they pay an inmate forty cents an hour, forty cents an hour, and they take half of that anyway. But forty cents an hour, and they take that money and they're building like some some prisons make hats, some prisons make beds, some makes mail bags, uniforms, and how can a company on the street? compete with these people who are paying people 40, 40 cents an hour. Can't do it. They put companies out of business. It was a great story in 60 Minutes about private prison industries, how they put people out of business. And it was, it was it, boy, talk about ringing bells. So anyway, I'm in the hole. And so Jose Linares is in the hole. He stole $135,000 from the Federal Bureau of Prisons Unicor. It's funny as shit. You can look it up. Just put uh, inmate steals 135000 on Google. You'll find it or whatever, I'm sure. What what we called it, and they, the prison called it, was called Unigate, if you guys remember Watergate. But they called it Unigate. What he was doing was he was the clerk. So he ends up stealing and finding how to get the bank code where to, to, to do the procurements and stuff of the prison. So the head of the Unicor and was the associate warden named Bill Young. I got some memory. Well, anyways, Bill Young. So he opens up a company on the street called TYBY. TYBY. And, the, and that, that company was Thank You, Bill Young. It's fucking hilarious. Thank You, Bill Young. TYBY. And what he does, he, he has them... St- cutting checks for materials that really were never made or stuff that was never received materials to his company TYBYU from the prison so he stole $135,000 from the prison he was in the hole at the time I was there and and the hole was a zoo I mean some of the guards actually loved the guys because like good you fucked over the system because they Trust me, some of them are, are cool dudes, the guards, and they know the prisons are assholes or whatever it is, but they're feeding their families, so I respect them there. But anyway, this guy, Len- Helen Harris, does this, and the whole was a z- unit. He becomes an orderly. I mean, who was getting blowjobs through the shoot doors were open. Guys are jacking off at the girl. The women guards in that prison were going up to the doors, and the guys were jacking off, and the girls watching, showing their titty to the guy. It was just a fucking zoo prison. The hole was pretty cool, actually, there. So we're in the hole in that prison, and Linares' story goes around, and he ends up getting 
18 months in prison for this robbery, which was he give a fuck anyway. 18 months in prison, and he, 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 here's how he got caught. He got caught by an idiot on the street, sent $30,000 to his prison account. $30,000 to his prison account. How stupid is that? Anyway, so I'm in the hole. The only incident I had bad in that incident in the hole, we used to get wrecked. So in the hole, you go to the recreation yard while the guard cuffs you up. You, you, you get bent down. You put your hands through the chute, you know, in your door. The guard cuffs you up. You're behind your back and you get to the yard and it's a cage. I say the yard. It's a cage. They put you in a cage and then they uncuff you and then they go get another guy. Or they wait. They actually put everybody's in the cage cuffed together. So we're waiting for the, everybody to get in the cage and then the guard starts letting everybody's cuffs out. Come on, come here, come here. So in prison, there was what they call door warriors. Door warriors are guys who think they're tough guys behind the door. They're banging on the doors. This guy's banging on the door every day, complaining. Shut the fuck up, you pussy. And he's fucking complaining. He's just banging. And he's saying, fuck you, fuck you. And he's doing, him and I, and I don't like to do that. I'm kind of calm. And I, I said, fuck, I'm going to get this motherfucker. I'm going to get this motherfucker. So I told this dude through the door. I said, man, come out to the fucking yard. Because when you're in the yard, you can fight in that cage. I mean, they're going to come get you, whatever. I said, come out in the yard, motherfucker. Come on today. And he, but I had it rigged. He was a big motherfucker too. I'm glad I did this. You can, f you can slip handcuffs. I took a, uh, 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 what's a paper clip and you straighten out. And I kept the paper clip in my, my waistband. And the guard cuffs me up. And in the hole, they don't double cuff, double lock the cuffs. Double locks that little button they put in the back of handcuffs that make it where you can't go either way. So if they don't do that, all you do is you slide a, a paper clip inside the cuff and you move your hand the opposite way and it'll unlatch that latch enough that it'll go and then you could, it's called slipping cuffs. So he takes me out, of the, out, this guy first takes me out and I'm on the yard, I slip my cuffs. So I'm really standing there like this, but my cuff is off. It's just in my hand, it's I'm holding it and I'm waiting. The guards put this fucking dude in the cell. I fucking just wailed on this motherfucker. I beat him half to death. Bam! Till they got me, till they're screaming, oh, and get off, get off. You know, you don't care. In prison, you black out. I'm beating There's a cuff actually flying around. Bam! And I'm beating him. I'm beating him. And this guy was bloodied up until they got me. And they asked me, you know, uh, never forget his name. Again, Price. Price says to me, what happened? What was that all about, man? What You went nuts on this fucking guy. I said, Price, this guy's the total. And he, they knew he was an asshole. The guards in the hole who run the hole knew this dude was an asshole. And I, and I said, man, this guy fucking, how much can I take of this? I'm fucking going nuts in this fucking hole. And, and I said, I'm going to a penitentiary anyway. What do I give a shit? I'm going back. You know, what are you going to do? Give me another shot? Give me more time in the hole? Fuck, I've been in a hole eight months already. Right here, I've been fucking in a hole waiting eight months for causing all this shit with tubs. And sure enough, I fucking survived. You know, I, I had some, I call it good times. I met some great people in those two prisons to this day. I know some of them from uh, some outlaws I know and some other guys I know. And mobsters I met at different prisons. And But now I'm going back. I'm going back to one of the worst prisons in the system. It was new, but it was one of the worst. It was called Edgefield. Edgefield, South Carolina. I'm heading back there, and that's going to be our next chapter. So I'll end that chapter here, but next chapter is going to be pretty wild. That's my worst. I'm even thinking about it getting a fucking chills. But it is what it is. Uh, hey, everybody, I hope you're liking this. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying telling the story again. It's pretty, pretty good, bringing back memories. Like I said, some good, some bad. Uh, like you see, we got merch now. It's really pretty cool. I, I cut the sleeves off. I got this and I actually use it. It's pretty good. And, uh, it's pretty cool, the mug. I mean, I, I mean, is that pretty cool? I mean, I know it's weird, but it's pretty cool. I thought it's weird. It's pretty cool. And I, again, the shirts are pretty cool. And I got the other shirt on the wear. The next one is the, uh, it's my favorite saying. It's, I don't believe in bad people. I believe in bad choices. 
And people make bad choices and they shouldn't be judged for the rest of their life. You know, we all make mistakes in life. And uh, I'm really enjoying this. You could listen to this whole entire thing, me reading this chapter verbatim on Spotify and on iTunes, right in the links below. The merchandise is in the links below. Uh, we're on Instagram. You know, we're getting on all social media. I'm trying to build this platform to let everybody know to build this platform to be very powerful so we can hold truth to power. We can hold these people accountable. We can maybe help criminal justice reform. We can fix this broken prison system that I know more about than probably anybody. And these people who get on TV and talk about it, these wardens and stuff, come in the prison, motherfucker, and I'll see what you know. But... That's what I'm doing. So, you know, we take donations. We talk to buy a shirt, do something. We're going to do a live show when I hit 75,000 subscribers. I already contacted YouTube to have that turned on. We're going to do a, a live show at 75,000 uh, subscribers. So we're pretty close. We're at 70,000 when I'm taping this. So it should be, be more. I'm taping it a few days beforehand. So, and I hope to keep this thing going, man. I'm, I'm really enjoying the comments, everybody. I really do appreciate it. I enjoy reading them. If I don't answer everyone, I read them. I do answer most of them, as you all know. So keep them coming. Keep passing the word. Subscribe if you haven't. And please uh, help us in any way you can. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great day. And man, make good choices, man. Don't go where I went. Just make good choices and... And I hope to meet everybody someday in some kind of convention or we'll figure something out. Have a great day, everybody.